Density of joint receptors. So we're blessed with four different types of joint mechanoreceptors. So we ha need a normal number of receptors per joint to be activated. If I injure the joint, I blow away a few receptors. Do they grow back? No. <laughs> Nerve cells don't have centrioles. They can't reproduce. In kids, we have these stem cells that keep dividing and dividing. And then once they're done, you're done. That's it. We can't make more. If we just damage the axon, we may be able to do a little bit of improvement, but if we kill the cell body, it's toast. We have 31 joints just in the foot. Wow, highest concentration of joints we have anywhere in the whole body. And guess what? That's what interfaces with the ground first. Pretty cool stuff. So the world of joint mechanoreceptors. We have four types of receptors present in all articulations. It used to only think that we had uh, mechanoreceptors types 1, 2, and 3 in most of the joints, but an interesting study in the late 90s, 1998 I believe, and I believe it was either in Spine or Journal of Orthopedic and Sports Physical Therapy, Sally Wheeler showed that we have joint mechanoreceptors even in discs, like intervertebral discs. These guys work in conjunction with the muscle spindles and Golgi tendon organs, and they travel largely up the spinocerebellar pathways and the dorsal column, mostly spinocerebellar pathways, which we're going to find out drives our extensors. Very important. So type 1 mechanoreceptors are these endings in the superficial layers of the joint, and they're tonic. In other words, if we think about a joint, like actually let's go over here to the board real quick. Let's imagine this as the joint, okay? And then this around it is the joint capsule. Type 1 mechanoreceptors are on the outside of the joint capsule. They're on the outside of the joint. They're what we call tonic receptors. So I'm standing here. I got these receptors in my back muscles, right? I'm standing here, and I start to lean forward a little bit. What happens if I move this joint a little bit to this receptor? It moves a whole lot, right? Think about a record. Some of you are old enough to remember a record, right? <laughs> A record, you're putting it on there, right? Some are even older to remember 16 RPMs, right? Okay, so a record on 16 RPM, you put a penny on the outside of the record and a penny next to the spindle in the middle. I spin it around one revolution. Which one moves more? The one on the outside, the type 1 mechanoreceptors. So every time you are standing or you move just a little bit, these get fired a lot. And they're important because they cause presynaptic inhibition. And guess what? When you stick an acupuncture needle in and you irritate the surface of the joint, guess what we're irritating? Type 1 mechanoreceptors. It's really cool because type 1 mechanoreceptors presynaptically inhibit pain fibers. I'll show you a diagram in a couple slides here. It's way cool. That's one of the reasons acupuncture is so cool. They're low threshold. Doesn't take much to get them excited. Sort of like a teenage boy, right? They adapt slowly, unlike a teenage boy. <laughs> Thank you.